Now we have to do the same thing, but this time for the supply equation. Again, we're going to ignore everything above this row, and we're we're going to regress this part of the stacked Y on this part of Z hat. We're going to call this part of Z hat Z two underscore hat. We're going to call this part of Y Y two underscore. And we're going to put the three estimated parameters in these three boxes. Okay, so again, we apply OLS to this group of numbers and this group of numbers Y1 or Y2 underscore and Z2 underscore hat. So we're going to type equal transpose. M multiply, M inverse, M multiply, transpose, Z2 underscore hat, comma, Z2 underscore hat, M multiply, transpose, Z2 hat, comma, Y2 hat. Hit Control Shift Enter, and you get the parameters for the supply equation using two stage least squares. This is the intercept of the supply equation. This is the estimated parameter for the weather variable. And this is the um, coefficient for the price variable. In this case, price, the predicted uh, price level from the reduced form equation. Next, we need to compute estimates of the variance of the errors for both equations and the covariance of the two equations, error terms. To do that, we're going to use residuals. We're going to compute the residuals using the z's, not the z hat, and the two stage, two stage least squares estimates. So the first residual is the observed value of q minus the predicted value of q. And the way we're going to compute the, the uh, predicted value of q is, again, to use um, the first row of Z1, not Z1 hat. We're going to make use of the sum product command. We're not going to use, again, Z1 hat. We're going to use the first row of Z1. And then we're going to multiply that by the two stage least squares estimates for the demand curve. Now, before I hit enter, I'm going, to, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the four, both fours. That'll freeze uh, this purple box. So when I copy and paste, I'm computing residuals with that frozen. So the first residual is 411.58. If I copy and paste that down here, I get the residuals Again, using Z, not Z hat, and two stage least squares estimates. Now we're going to do the same thing um, for the supply equation. We're going to, we're going to again, for review, we're going to t uh, compute the residual using the observed value of Y on the supply equation and the predicted value. Or the predicted value is computed by taking the first observation of Z2, not Z2 hat, with the two stage least squares estimates for the supply curve. Now, again, before I hit enter, I'm going to put dollar signs in front of the four. So the first residual for the supply equation is a negative 693.46. Copying and pasting yields the remaining residuals. Now we're going to use the residuals above to compute estimates of the variance for the demand curve 
and an estimate for the variance of the error term for the supply curve and their covariance. To compute the estimated variance of the error term for the demand equation, I'm going to again make use of the sum product command. I'm going to take the sum product of the, the demand equation's residuals with the demand equation residuals. So the variance, the estimated variance of the error for the demand equation is this number. We're going to do the same thing for the estimated variance for the supply equation. Equal sum product, the residuals for the supply curve, the residuals for the supply curve. So the estimated variance of the supply curve is this number. Oh, we forgot to divide by the number of observations here. We had 18 time periods. Okay, so correction. The estimated error, the estimated variance of the error term for the demand equation is this number. The estimated variance of the error term for the supply equation is that number. Now the estimated covariance in the errors is found by taking the sum product of the demand curve's residuals with the supply curve's estimated errors and then dividing that by the number of time periods. And this number here would be the same as that. Okay. Now note this is the, you can think of this as the MSE for the demand equation and you can, you can think of this as the MSE for the supply equation. Next we need to take the inverse of the estimated sigma matrix. And we do that right here. All we do is we type equal M inverse, matrix inverse, parenthesis. Then we highlight those four numbers, close parenthesis, and then we, we hit control shift enter. So that's the cool thing about Excel is that it computes matrix, the inverse of a matrix. Now, if we take the square root of that number right there, we get the standard error of the estimate for the demand equation. Likewise, if we take the square root of that number here, um, we get the standard error of the estimate for the supply equation. Now, this matrix here is going to be used in the computation of the three stage least squares estimates. Take this matrix and we're going to compute the Kronecker product, um, its Kronecker product with the identity matrix. Now, since the stacked y vector and the stacked z hat matrix have 36 rows and the inverse of the estimated sigma matrix is 2 by 2. The Kronecker product of this matrix and the identity has to have 36 rows and 36 columns. Now Excel doesn't do a Kronecker product. You have to do it by hand. But this is what it would look like after you do it by hand. This is the number, this number here is the first number in the top left of the inverse of the estimated sigma matrix. And it goes along the diagonal until it gets to the 18th row and 18th column. Uh, and is then replaced by a number ending in point or in 0081. So when you get to row 19 and column 19, it changes from 0 0.00000225 to 0 0.00000081. And then it continues on 
all the way down, down until you get to the 36th row and 36th column of the Chronicle product. Now in the lower diagonal, you have the number ending in 076, this number. And this starts in um, row 19, column 1, and continues down until you get to row 36, column 18. But, but interesting enough, the same number shows up in row 1, column 19, because this number here is that number there, and they're the same. So this is what the Kronecker product looks like. And it is 36 by 36. It'd be nice if Excel did that, but it doesn't do it.